Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is module 8 where we're going to practice carrying out the kind of science called genetic analysis. We'll begin with a couple of lectures about Gregor Mendel, um, emphasizing the practices that he undertook that made him such a superb scientist and allowed him to discover how inheritance worked 50 years before anybody else figured it out. And then we have a long series of lectures with a lot of genetics problems where we'll learn to think our way through crosses and make inferences about how inheritance works in particular cases and about what genes do in particular cases. And then finally, we'll spend three lectures on thinking about how do we evaluate the data, how to tell whether the results of your experiment actually mean anything or not. Now, I want to take a minute to emphasize why it's still worth learning genetic analysis. Genetic analysis for, oh, more than a hundred years was the only way people came to understand how heredity worked and how genes worked, by doing crosses, by making mutants, and analyzing phenotypes. But we have a lot more powerful techniques now. Just in the last 10 or 20 years, there have been amazing changes in genetics. And genetic analysis isn't needed as much as it was. But it's still very valuable for many reasons. For one thing, It'll build your ability to think carefully about genetic situations and issues because you'll wrestle with the genetic concepts and come to understand them much more deeply. You'll also experience thinking like a scientist, looking at experimental data and figuring out what it means. You'll discover how powerful logic and experiment can be, um, that really you can know things by doing simple experiments. And I hope you'll enjoy the challenge. If you like detective stories, I think you'll really like genetics problems. Now, for those of you who were not in part one in the last two months, I want to introduce our peer explain assignments. These are assignments that were motivated by a desire to help students build their skills at explaining what they've learned to people who don't know genetics, to friends and relatives, for instance. And to do this, we have in this part of the course two assignments where you will be given a question, the kind of question that you might get from a friend, a relative, somebody you met at the pub or in the park. And you will have 200 words in which to come up with an explanation that ordinary non-genetically trained people could understand. And then your explanation will be evaluated and graded by other students. Here's the practicalities of how this assignment will work. Um, when the Module 8 materials became available on Friday morning, the submission page for Peer Explain Assignment C also became open. So you can, at any time in the time up until the Sunday midnight deadline for the end of Module 8 when the graded quiz is due. You have until then to compose your 200-word submission and submit it through the, the submission page. At that time, submissions will close. We can't grade submissions that come in after that. And all of the submissions will then be randomized and assigned to other students to grade. As a student, you will first grade three training submissions that will give you practice in identifying strong points and weak points and then you will get three submissions from your fellow students to grade. You can grade more if you like. Then you'll go back and reevaluate your own submission in the light of what you've learned by looking at other submissions. Once the second deadline is reached at the end of module 9, you'll be free to look at the evaluations that other students gave to your submission. Now, we want these to be moderately, we don't want them to be very time consuming. And so we're hoping that the total time commitment is only about two hours. So don't spend a lot of time crafting an absolutely perfect submission, unless you enjoy it and you don't have anything more important that you should be doing. Now, coming up is lecture 8a where we're going to talk about Mendel. I'm going to introduce Mendel and explain why geneticists view him with awe 
as a really mature modern scientist, not just a humble bumbling friar who grew peas. I hope to see you there.